Hello and welcome to this tutorial. Let's take a look at what we're going to be doing. As you can see, we've got a flock of balls that are traveling over the top of a displaced terrain, and we've got some color variations. Okay, so let's take a look at how we can do this. Okay, first of all, I've already set up a flock. If we go into our flocking, where it says add new, you can go into uh, basic setup, click on that. I've gone ahead and done that, and if you calculate it, it's done. And um, let me just show you the other settings for the generator 3 by 1 by 6 and the size, and that's how I've set up my agents. Okay, so as you can see, we've got our flock traveling along the terrain. Um, going to our uh, director. So what we want to do is we want to displace the terrain so that we can then have set up the uh, flock to travel it over the top of it. So if I choose the ground, I've already got a set up, a displacement set up. And if we go over to calculate flocks, pretty much stays along the ground plane. So what we need to do is go in to flocking and click on flock and we need to go ahead and edit the nodes. Okay, so I take no credit for this whatsoever. Um, I'd like to thank James Wilmot for posting this information in the New Tech Forum. So thanks James. So I'm pretty much just copying um, what he posted. Okay. Now you can basically go up here and type stuff in, but I'm going to go through it um, very specifically. So the first uh, node we need is under flocking, and that is agent agent info. Okay. The next one is if we go to constant vector. Okay. The next one is we'll close that off and go to math vector subtract. Okay, and the next one is uh, ray trace. Where are you? Ray trace, ray trace geometry. Okay, these are all the nodes that we need, and, and don't worry about this setup because we're going to save this as a preset. So every time you want to do this, you can just load it up. Okay, the next thing is to plug things in. So for the agent agent info, we go from the position to subtract a from the vector we go into subtract B and we also go in from the vector to ray direction and from the subtract results we go into ray origin and from intersect of the ray cast geometry we go into the agent controls new position and we double click on ray, ray, ray cast geometry and we select the ground so we want these uh, this flock to conform to the ground and close that off and what I'll do is is we'll make sure that it's working so we'll calculate we'll wait till that finishes and we'll have a look and it didn't work because we need to turn on use nodes we'll calculate that again and as you can see we've got our flock traveling over the top so it seems to be working. I'll let that finish. Okay, and there we have it. We have our flock traveling over the top of our displaced terrain. Okay, so with that, now that we know that it works, we'll go back to flocking and we'll select flocking and edit nodes and we'll select all these nodes and we'll go to edit, export selected and we'll call this raycast flock and we'll save that now I just want to show you something it's either a, a, a quirk or a glitch or a bug of some sort but if we um, delete these and we go ahead and import that node blocking raycast flock and if we plug in again, close it and hit calculate motion. <coughs> I 
you'll find that it didn't work, that we have an error. And the best way to see this is to go to frame 2 and you can see this funky thing happening here. Okay, so let me show you what that's all about and how to fix it. Go back to flocking, select our flock, go to edit nodes. And you'll notice here that the agent, agent info, which I can't pronounce, is all blacked out and um, <laughs> I found that this is the issue so basically the way to get around that is just to select it again and as you can see it's pretty obvious indication if, uh, of it being uh, uh, wrong the black one's wrong and the, and the color one is the one we want so we've unplugged that and plug in position we can delete that and if we calculate the motion now you'll notice that it's working correctly. So I'll abort that. Now there's one other quirk or issue or I'm not sure what but um, I'll point it out because it's pretty important. Now if I select my ground and we go over to wireframe, go over to geometry, what you'll notice is that we've got a, a display sub patch level of 3 um, the higher this level is, the, the longer the calculation of the flock, but the more accurate. Um, so if you turn this all the way down to zero, you get a representation of what your mesh looks like in Modeler. And if we hit Calculate Flock now, it does it much quicker. But what you'll notice is that it's broken, that it didn't work. Um, the trick is or the fix or, or the, the, the correct settings for this is to have at least one level of um, display sub patch. So if we calculate the flock again, you'll notice it does it really quick and it works and it works well. So there you go, that's how you set that up. Okay, so that now that we've got our flock all set up and we've got all the little bugs and stuff out of the way, let's go ahead and instance um, our ball to this flock and that's very simple all we do is we select our flock and we go over to properties object uh, uh, the flock properties over to instancer and we had instance generator double click on that and we'll select our ball and I'll just make that shaded solid and we'll uh, tick particles for the type and close that off and there we have it we have our ball instanced to the flock you can have whatever object you want okay so now that we've got that done let's have a look at it in VPR now the next step that I want to go ahead and show is how we can get some color variation um, in our object without having to create a whole bunch of different objects. So what I'll do is I'll hold shift left click to bring up the um, surface editor and what I've done is I've split the ball into two pieces top and bottom as if that was a t-shirt or whatever and, and the bottom parts your pants as if you had a little character or something and what I've done is, is I've set up some nodes and if I click on them for the bottom and for the top oops. edit that bit out. If I select a node you'll notice now that I've got some nice color variations. So I'll go ahead and show you how this is set up. Basically we go over to our spot and get click on instance info. Okay that's what you need and with that I'll just delete that. Next to that I've got a couple of gradients with some variations in color um, and this particular one is step so that we've got a defined um, um, line between the two different colors and this gradient here we have a nice transition which uses the Hermite I believe it's pronounced uh, transition between all, all the colors so what we do is we select now you don't need to have two here these are just examples but we go out of uh, fixed random into input and from color we go into color so I'll just move this to the side and 
I'll unplug it and plug it back in. So that's how you do that. And if you go to the bottom, pretty much got the same thing in the bottom. This time I'm just using the stepped, and that's how we get some variation in our color. So that's how we do our flocking with our Raycast node, um, adding some instances and some color variation. In the next tutorial, I'm going to show you a more realistic um, example of how this might be used with a character that I've got that's running. So I'll have a whole, a whole uh, group of um, guys running across the terrain. So I hope this has helped. I'll speak to you next time.